Hey everybody, thanks for joining today's Entub Live about streamlining lattice structure generation with custom blocks. My name is Christopher Cho, Senior Application Engineer and Medical Device Guy at Entopology. Today's session was going to be the first of a few Entub Lives that will dive deeper into leveraging a collection of custom blocks meant specifically for the generation of osseo integrative structures. For those of you not too familiar with custom blocks, a good way to think about them is to consider them as a compact or compartmentalized set of blocks. Custom blocks have a variety of uses, but one of their most common uses is to take a handful of complex or non-intuitive blocks and combine them in such a way so that all the complexity is hidden and only what is important becomes available to the user. The biggest benefit this provides is the ability to take a really long or complicated workflow that would normally use a lot of blocks and condense it down to just one or two. The download link below will give you access to a collection of over 40 custom blocks designed specifically for generating and analyzing ICO integrative structures. I have taken the extensive design workflow starting from CAD part and ending with mesh export and segmented the design process into a handful of blocks that can be easily implemented in a modular way, giving you the freedom to use only what you feel is necessary for your design workflow. Today's focus is on the lattice structure generation aspect of this OSEO Integrative Structures Toolkit. I have here a few different lattice structures already created using blocks from within the lattice graph generation folder and the structure generation folder of the downloadable OSEO Integrative Structures Toolkit. Setting up the notebook to use these blocks is quite easy, where the user imports their CAD model as a multi-body CAD part. This means that inside this model, there are two pre-segmented bodies, one representing the solid region and one representing the lattice design region. Even though for this specific example, we have both bodies it being imported together within the same model, you may find it easier to manage if these segmented bodies are imported into anthropology as separate parts entirely. This is purely a matter of preference and does not make a functional difference at the end of the day. From there, we are simply converting them from CAD model to Entopology's implicit model using the implicit body from CAD body block, while also ensuring that the tolerance value for these blocks is set to 0.001 millimeters, up from the default of 0.01. Now, I've chosen to drop the now implicit lattice design region into a variable, simply because I plan on using this more than once. As a reminder, you can use variables however you like, but as a rule of thumb, I only tend to create variables when I intend to use something more than once. If you schematize down to these different variations of lattice structures that I have created, you can see that my desired beam thickness for these lattice structures vary from structure to structure, so I chose not to make that beam thickness input a variable. Again, purely preferential, but I find this to be more organized in my mind. So looking at our graph lattice generation section, we can see four graph-based lattice structures. These are the ordered lattice, the randomized lattice open cell variant, the randomized lattice closed cell variant, and the tetrahedral lattice. If you have used entopology a little bit before, you're probably very familiar with these lattice structures already. At its core, these lattices are not very hard to create using native blocks. However, these custom blocks offer the user a very quick and easy way to drop in their desired fill volume and generate the structures with all the bells and whistles already in place. We call these specific lattices graph lattices because the structure is initially generated and represented using a beam and node representation, simply a distribution of lattice nodes and the beams that connect them. Only in the next step, which is the thickening step, do we actually apply thickness and tangibility to these lattices. You can see that this specific thickening block is earmarked as truncated because this method will specifically truncate any lattice beam that falls outside of the lattice design volume, even if this means cutting the beam at a weird angle. However, keep in mind that the small scale of these structures typically makes this not an issue when manufacturing because the melt pool created by your laser beam or your electron beam will likely give you a rounded beam at the end of the day anyway. This truncated representation that we see on the screen is really just for digital representation of your lattice. If you prefer to digitally see these beams be not truncated and rounded instead, there is a thickening block inside of the structure generation folder that can give you rounded beams. Ultimately, this roundness or this truncation will pass on to your STL. There are some slight nuances between these digital lattice results, so please read the PDF documentation to find out more. The simplicity of these custom blocks is that they wrap up a lot of the math and calculations that are typically recommended when attempting to make effective osseo integrative structures in entopology. Concealing them inside these blocks ensure that only the inputs that really matter to the user are available and modifiable. Now of course you can always look inside of these blocks or read the provided PDF documentation to see exactly what is going on. 
But the general idea is that the customization of the structure is what is available at this surface level. And the concealment of all the underlying functionality is to avoid any accidental changes and just make things easier to use overall. As you become more familiar with the software, you may find yourself wishing to create your own unique variation of structure. For example, you can always start from scratch to develop your own workflow that outputs a graph lattice, and that can then be dropped into our Thicken Lattice Graph custom block. Or you can use the existing custom block that we provided, such as this ordered lattice graph, and use that as the starting point to make your own modifications. Whichever methodology you do choose, the idea is to offer a sense of modularity when designing these workflows. As time goes on, the user may themselves replace some of these custom blocks with those of their own. And that in itself is a really great sign you are learning how to use Entopology better and better. Before we close out, I do want to indicate that TPMS structures like the wall gyroid can still very much be considered valuable osseo integrative structures depending on how exploratory you are willing to be with characterization. However, it is generated using only one custom block instead of the two that we typically use for graph lattices. The reason for this is because there is no node beam representation or graph for TPMS structures. They simply start as implicit models so that no thickening is really necessary. All the user needs is to dictate a unit cell size and a target wall thickness and the lattice structures like gyroid or lidenoid will just appear. From design to output, Entopology offers not just a variety of ways to control aspects of your osseointegrative lattice design process, but also a variety of ways to control where and how the design process is applied. Obviously, what I've shown you today is not intended as a be-all and end-all solution when it comes to designing osseointegrative lattices for your medical devices. There are many ways to go about this within Entopology alone, and this is merely an example on how to use our pre-existing osseointegrative structures toolkit to hit the ground running with Entopology.